Throughout music history, almost every classical composer was white. In the late 1890s, a new style of music from New Orleans, an African-American culture called jazz, was emerging and becoming a very popular style of music in America. There was one composer who combined jazz and classical music, as well as merging African motifs into his music. This man was William Grant Still. He is the first black classical composer and used his music to help bring a voice to the African-American community in America. Still was born in 1895 in Woodville, Mississippi. Unfortunately, his father passed away when he was three months old, so his mother moved them to Little Rock, Arkansas, where he grew up. His stepfather was a musician and helped nurture Still's musical interests, teaching him the violin and other instruments, as well as teaching him about opera and other classical music styles. His mother, however, wanted him to become a doctor, so when Stills went to Wilberforce University, he started in medical science. But Stills' passion for music was very strong and instead pursued a music degree. After graduating from Wilberforce University, he attended the Oberlin Conservatory of Music. After graduating from college in 1918, he served in the Navy during the end of World War I. In 1919, when Stills returned home to America, he moved to New York and started working as an arranger, composer, and performer for publishing companies and radio networks such as NBC. In 1924, he wrote his first orchestral piece called Darker America, and in 1926, he wrote his first orchestral suite called From the Black Belt. But his barrier-breaking composition was in 1931, with the composition The Afro-American Symphony. The Afro-American Symphony was the first of its kind to use jazz and was also the first symphony to be written by a black composer. The symphony had four movements representing different emotions in African-American culture. Longing, sorrow, humor, and aspiration. These movements also had accompanying African-American poems. According to Duke University, the Afro-American Symphony was the most influential symphony of its time. The symphony also helped bring more representation to the African-American community. A year after premiering his symphony, he wrote a ballet called Saji. This combined classical ballet, jazz music, and African dance into one performance. Almost all of Still's pieces combined African motifs in his music. Motifs in music are recurring themes throughout a piece. Still's music used these African motifs to help raise awareness for the African American community in America. He was an influential part of the Harlem Renaissance in 1930s New York. The Harlem Renaissance was a cultural movement that promoted the ideas, innovations, and contributions of the African American community in modern society. His influence earned him the Guggenheim Award in music, and he used the money to write his first opera, Blue Steel, a story about black steel workers, and then in 1937 he wrote Lenox Avenue, a ballet about life in Harlem. In 1939, Stills moved to Los Angeles, where his success continued. He became the first African American to conduct a major symphony orchestra, the L.A. Philharmonic. He also worked with civil rights poet Langston Hughes to premiere his second opera, A Troubled Island, an opera about the Haitian slave uprising in the 17 and 1800s. This was the first opera to be written and premiered in an American opera house by a black composer. Stills also wrote for TV and radio, including his last opera, A Bayou Legend. 
Still's greatest hope was to promote and foster intercultural understanding through music in America. Unfortunately, in 1978, Stills passed away from a stroke. William Grant Still may not be the most well-known African-American icon, however his works and inspirations help create a bridge of intercultural understanding and progress for the African-American community in the United States.